Apple just released the RC or release candidate build of iOS 16.4 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And along with this release, we got the RC build of iPad OS 16.4, Mac OS 13.3, watchOS 9.4, tvOS 16.4, HomePod OS 16.4, and also iOS 15.7.4 RC for those on older devices. And since we're going from a beta to a final release, the RC is just the final release, but for beta testers, that size is going to be large. So it's 5.45 gigabytes on my 14 Pro Max. That size will be multiple gigabytes no matter what device you are coming from. Now let's go ahead and check out the build number for for this RC settings general about we could see that the build number is 20E246 and unless we get a second RC release this will be the build number for the final release of iOS 16.4 when that launches and the same goes with the modem firmware so 1.67.04 is the new modem firmware that's a nice jump up from 16.3.1 all right so now what's new here in the RC build of iOS 16.4 and the first thing is voice isolation we now have a voice isolation for regular phone calls so this has been a feature that's been available for FaceTime calls and in other third-party apps like whatsapp but now this is available for cellular phone calls so this feature is designed to remove background noise and improve your overall mic quality when you're on calls I used this when it first released in iOS 15 and I wasn't too pleased with it it wasn't that great so I will be testing it out here on the RC build over the next week and I will let you guys know how that is in my final 16.4 what's new video but now we do have voice isolation for regular cellular phone calls and then if we take a look at the change log this is what you'll see once you update to 16.4 the final release we will get these bullet points right here so the first thing Apple mentions is 21 new emojis we already covered all of those new emojis we have notifications for web apps added to the home screen so this is going to be those safari web push notifications so now websites will be able to send push notifications to your iphone instead of having to rely on a application that you download in the app store ios 16.4 also brings the duplicates feature for photos to the icloud shared library so before your iphone would only detect duplicates in your personal library but now if you have a shared library with iCloud, it will detect duplicates and you can remove or merge those in the Photos app now. This update also adds voiceover support for maps in the weather application. So if you go into weather and go to your weather map right here, this now has a voiceover support if you are a voiceover user. And speaking of accessibility, another big accessibility feature that I actually am a fan of is inside of the motion section. And right here we have dim flashing lights. So it says video content that depicts repeated flashing or strobing lights will be automatically dimmed so here's an example of those strobing lights I'm gonna go ahead and keep this down here in the picture in picture and now I'm going to enable this feature and take a look at what happens for those flashing lights right there so you can see it dims it down much lower so it's not as you know bright and pungent on your eyes so if I remove that you can see much bigger effect on your eyes when you dim those flashing lights it hardly affects your eyes and of course this is a video of just purely flashing lights so it's not gonna you know drain it out completely but when you're watching a show or a movie or something comes up in a real world scenario this is going to be a great feature to have there's also a fix for a bug where asked to buy requests from children may fail to appear on the parents device so if you have your family member set up right here and you have parental controls you may have noticed this bug previously but that has now been fixed with 16.4 there's also a fix to an issue I've had in 16.3 and 16.3.1 so it says addresses an issue where matter compatible thermostats could become unresponsive when paired to Apple home so I had this in my home application if I go to my thermostat you could see right here I have two different ones and they would just completely become unresponsive I would have to go into the application for my thermostat instead of relying on the home application but now ever since beta 1 of 16.4 this seems to have been fixed although I do have to say that the home application is still a mess I mean I'm still seeing the configuring right here this one says no response even though they're all plugged in 
again and they all are working properly. So maybe I just need to update my home pods and everything to 16.4 RC, but I don't think, you know, anything in my home application has recovered since the terrible update in 16.2 for the home architecture. And then the final bullet point that Apple mentions here is crash detection optimizations for 14 and 14 Pro models. So I told you guys, starting with like 16.1, I told you that Apple would have car crash detection optimizations in every single update until iOS 17. And that has held up to be true. Every single update has optimizations for that because I feel like it's kind of an endless game. They're going to have to constantly optimize the devices to reduce, you know, false triggers, like when you're skiing or when you fall or something like that. So that's everything that Apple mentions in the release notes for 16.4. However, I've found like at least 30 more new features and changes in 16.4. So definitely stay tuned for my what's new video when that does get released, when it releases out to the public, which we'll talk about when that's releasing to the public here in a moment. I did also want to mention that in the code of 16.4, 9 to 5 Mac found added support for an unreleased pair of Beats Studio Buds Plus. So it appears that new Beats Studio Buds Plus will be releasing soon as they've been added support wise here in 16.4. Also in the code, apparently there are references to new AirPods with the model number A3048 and also a new AirPods case with a new model number. So this is kind of confusing. We're not expecting any new AirPods anytime soon. So I'm not sure if Apple's maybe switching over to a USB-C case or what, but that's interesting to find in the code as well. Also in the Apple Music application on the Listen Now tab, you can see that the playlists up top have a new look. And I did confirm with my other device that this was a server-side update. So you don't need 16.4 to see this, but that did just happen today. And that leads me to Apple Music Classical. And just a reminder that this is coming on March 28th. So that's coming next Tuesday, and that's going to be a standalone application for classical music. It is going to be free for Apple Music subscribers. If not, it's going to be $5 a month and you can see there's going to be a ton of music in here at the highest quality possible. I did also want to give you guys an update on the developer profile. So as you can see here in my VPN and device management, my beta profile never came back. So it automatically disappeared after installing beta four for some reason, but I was still able to get the software update, this RC build without having to reinstall that profile. So if you had that issue, just know that you don't need to install the profile to get future betas. However, that could end as early as 16.5. So, you know, if you're relying on getting the developer beta, but you don't have a paid developer account, you might not be so lucky when it comes to 16.5. And you definitely will not be as lucky when it comes to the iOS 17 betas, because you will need a paid developer account and to have that associated with your Apple ID when you tap on beta updates in here. However, if you don't want to pay the $100 a year for a developer account, you can always sign up for the public beta, which is free. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes, of course, it's way too early to tell yet if anything has changed in either performance or battery life. Battery life was not the greatest for me all along in 16.4, but the performance, I did notice an improvement over 16.3.1. So hopefully that continues. I will run a quick Geekbench test here to see how we score compared to previous betas. But as far as battery life goes, I will let you guys know in my Apple Weekly episode coming up and also in my 16.4 What's New video when it gets released to the public. I will give an update on the battery life there after using it on my main device for a week. So we scored about the same on the single core and slightly lower on the multi core. So not a big difference in the Geekbench results here, which again, these don't really tell the full story, but it is fun to kind of track the results over time. And then finally, let's talk about when to expect iOS 16.4, the final release. So since we got the RC today on March 21st, I would expect to see the final release next week. So Apple usually releases iOS you know releases the updates the point updates on a Monday so usually double point updates and triple point updates could come later in the week but usually for single point updates like 16.4 those typically come on Monday so I would expect it right there on March 27th the day before Apple Music Classical launches 
on the 28th. Now it's also possible to coincide with the release of Apple Music Classical on the 28th, but based on history, Apple usually releases these software updates on Monday. So my guess is the 27th, but it also could come on the 28th. And then as far as 16.5 beta one, I would expect that to release the same week that we get 16.4, the final release. So if that's the case where we get 16.4 final next week, we could see 16.5 beta one as early as the following day. So maybe on the 28th, we get 16 point five beta one. However, don't get your expectations up too high because that update is most likely not going to be anything major, especially since we just got a lot of new features with 16.4 and we're very late in the iOS 16 release cycle. So there you have it. That is the RC or release candidate build of iOS 16.4. I will see you guys in my what's new video when that drops next week and along with the Apple weekly episode coming up in a few days. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Also subscribe so you don't miss those upcoming videos. But anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.